BTS vlog. Um, this is going to be a little bit of a bizarre blog, uh, vlog because uh, rather than being recorded over the weekend and filmed over the weekend, things occurred that uh, no vlogging occurred over the weekend. But that's it. This is the vlog from uh, Friday, from Friday, February eighth to February tenth, and uh, that's what we're going to do. I'll give you an update on what happened over the weekend. It just what's happened as my schedule shifts and as I start adding in new work. Uh, sometimes it becomes a little difficult to do the vlogging uh, when I need to do vlogging. It really depends on on my fatigue level. If at the end of the day, at the end of the time when I'm basically at the end of the, at the end of the day when I'm supposed to vlog and give you what happened during the day, uh, if I'm too tired, then uh, there's no way. And again, it's, it's a functionality issue. There's no way that I can give you and or do the vlog. Uh, there's also the case where uh, at the beginning of the day when I'm supposed to do the vlog near the beginning of the day or, or you know or, or thereabouts, uh, if there's a project that hasn't finished properly from the day before, and now it's extending into several other days, then I'm not going to be able to vlog because the project I'm spending all my time working on the project. In other words. Uh, there are certain cases where a product becomes intensive and all the other projects are put on hold and that one single project is worked on until we bring it to a proper back into a proper place again and uh, then all the other projects come back in again it uh, the day goes back to well not the day but the day goes back to normal somewhat and that's kind of what happened over the weekend. The weekend uh, is, uh, is, was a period of change. Uh, as you know, every so often, uh, well, I change and update uh, the BTS vlog. I change and update the channel. And there's more going on in the research, so there are adjustments that are going on. This weekend was another period of adjustment. Uh, it, when I brought in the uh, washing machine, it freed up some time. Uh, that time allowed me to sort of move things around and upgrade things uh, on the on the network and a whole bunch of other different areas because I had extra time to do this. So as that work is now catching up, it gives me new opportunity to do different things. And one of the new things that are that's going on, and you'll, you, you're going to start you, you you'll be seeing this in uh, the videos. Uh, you should have already seen the in the videos. I'm getting enough an, enough new subscribers, enough new viewers. But as we start building the channel, uh, I need to inform the new viewers of what's going on. <laughs> so, uh, what you're seeing at the beginning of each video is the channel update. Uh, the channel update is uh, going to be crawling across uh, all the BTS logs from now on. Uh, they will be updated, uh, I think, either once or twice a week or just once a week. I haven't decided on the frequency to, up to do the channel updates on. The channel update that will be at the beginning will be about two three minutes in length and the whole goal of it is to welcome in new viewers uh, and to let them know what the standards are on the, are, are on this channel I know how to view this channel because there's not a standard channel you you, you 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 can do a lot of different things on here you don't have to watch a video through uh, uh, each video is broken up into segments so you, you can choose what segments of the videos you want to watch let's say you don't want to watch the entire video all at once you only want to watch a segment of a video then well you can do that you can choose which segment you want uh, there is in the description uh, the contents what's contained within each video so you can sort of figure, pick pick and choose what you want to watch how you want to watch it you know in other words 
you can sort of really start using uh, uh, Cyborg Alpha TV as a regular TV channel. This is a source you can, you know, turn your regular TV off, go on to your IPTV, and, you know, use this as a uh, regular IPT channel. There will be enough content here that you can take a good chunk of your viewing time on regular TV and uh, port it over to open IPTV. And if you can do enough of this, and this is the goal is if you get enough content out there, at some point in time, Open IPTV can be a viable uh, uh, option to uh, uh, to uh, standard IPTV. And an IPTV now is cable. You know, we got to understand this. IPTV now is cable. So if you're going with regular IPTV, you're going with regular, regular company, uh, your, your regular um uh, cable company that's where they offer it from uh, offer it through and uh, they the, and it comes with all the restrictions open ITV has no restrictions there's no copyrights it's nothing you can t you, you, you can take and choose from whatever you want to do in here it's a completely open environment and the, this it, it mirrors the internet and so if this is something you like then you, you this becomes more of a viable option it, you could start, uh, you know, using this uh, on a more regular basis. And I think we're going to be trying out a lot of different things. So, uh, I think that's going to be it for now because I said I'm, I'm, I am adding next two, three minutes uh, for the channel update. And you'll see this in every video from now on. And I think we will go back to, uh, in the second segment when I come back, uh, we will go back to uh, music. And uh, we'll work on that. Alrighty. Dig it easy. Well, while we have the option, well, while we have the time, you should say not the option, while we have the time, um, we're going to start uh, the next segment. And as I said, stated before, uh, what's going to happen is that uh, there's going to be a little extra eight to, each, to each video. But I will give you the time and date stamp first, and then we'll get on with the content in the second segment. Uh, it is 17 hours and 48 minutes into the day of Monday, February 10th, 2014. And we have a very cold day today. And oh, we're having a long week, winter, so uh, the Aura Vlog will take care of that. You'll be able to understand in the Aura Vlog uh, for the ad hoc notes that uh, what's actually going on. Anyways, we're going to go back into our music discussion. Uh, and that will then follow. Uh, we will follow that in the third segment with a discussion on uh, the ad hoc discussion on, uh, on the Illuminati puzzle. There's more more to that uh, that I was working on over the weekend. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you a brief tour of but sort of what's been sort of set up and how things are, are, are now around here, what the new options are. And the thing is, uh, I did hook up a music studio to the computer. So I, now I'm going to show you the, the music studio and show you what's what. You see the microphone here already. And so let me just pick you up here. And turn you around so you can see everything. Well, there's the two. These are the two cyborg. Uh, the, the, the two cyborgs, the Alpha Mu. Uh, so that's there, and one of them is hooked up to a speaker system. But there's the keyboard. This is a uh, Lexicon Alpha, uh, and it, what this does is it, it takes the uh, sound and brings it into the computer here. This is the computer, and it's this this is the box. Uh, up above is the IPTV. It's not on right now because I'll be leaving in a few minutes. And here are uh, two, uh, two uh, what you call it, two uh, mixers. This mixer has a, an options to sort of feed into things that, that you know gives me extra options uh, than rather than just simply having one uh, 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 mixer around. And let me see what I can do here to sort of get this going a little bit more. So that's the setup. That's the setup for music, and the goal is, is that uh, I, I've seen. Now let me get you stabilized. Here we go. I've seen that it's possible. I've seen several jazz music, musicians do this: take ordinary objects and turn them into musical items, to musical instruments. 
And I've seen this even with uh, when you go back and see the old villages or people who, are, who don't have a lot of money, if they make they make their own uh, musical instruments. So I've been taking a look a, a, a look on the internet, on particularly on YouTube, to see uh, what uh, musical instruments can be made. And there's a fair amount of uh, of stuff that can be made up there. So the goal is uh, over the next uh, little while is to start making uh, musical instruments. Testing out on, on, on the uh, system to see how they sound and whether or not they can be used to start making music. But the problem that I have is that I haven't done music since middle school. So that means that I'm going to have to go right back to the beginning and start right at the beginning again and uh, work my way up from the uh, beginning parts of music uh, up till now. So I know the history of music. I know... Uh, what I like, I, I can recognize different types of sounds in terms of those different styles. Now is I have to go back in and start adding in my uh, ability to play music. So this is going to be a whole new program for me, a whole new course. And now it may seem like, well, why am I adding in music? Well, because music in terms of history, this is why it's also included under, under, under the Bass Vlogs. And Bass stands for Byzantine Antiquity Studies Institute Vlog. Uh, and the reason why it's there is that oral history, oral tradition, is music. Music, music was the way uh, stories and uh, history was told prior to be written down. So uh, you use all this to go into history, but at the same time, because of the technical uh, abilities here, because of the sound you're using. You're dealing now. You're now dealing with solid state and acoustical physics, and you're also dealing with electronics. So you have a number of technical areas, a number of uh, scientific areas that can be investigated at the exact same time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this right now because I'm going to try to find some music that I can play on this to give you a brief example of what I'm talking about, and uh, I'll be right back. <laughs> said I would come back after I hooked everything up and got everything uh, set up to give you a demonstration of uh, how things work here and I've got it all set up I've got it, uh, the uh, music's going it's just now off in terms of the volume and I will uh, give you a brief example so here we go it's gonna go on then I'm gonna switch around to different tracks and I'll show you where, 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 where we can go with this here we go so this is it. This is some Ashley Simpson. So, but I have more than one track on here. So let's move the track along. Lady Gaga. Same thing. And this is um, the chanters at the Divine Liturgy. And this is the ancient Greek that I'm talking about. Now with a microphone, I can work, I can practice and uh, learn with this uh, as it's set up. But I can also, if we go back to the music, I can add in piano, and I can add in other instruments like guitar, whatever I want to add in. If I want to add in instruments, I can do that. And this is sort of how everything works, how how everything is sort of set up. Uh, and this allows me to sort of go from the the theoretical knowledge I have, the knowledge the 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 library knowledge that I have, and bring in a more uh, bring in more experience. In other words, um, in terms of the science terms, right? The library knowledge is your theoretical knowledge in music, the history that's your history and so on and so forth. But the practical knowledge, your labs Right here, this is your lab. This is your research area here, that where you where you do the uh, get the practical knowledge, and that practical knowledge, that experience, the, the actual experience of, of making music, is what connects you to the history even better than if you simply read along or listened along to whatever you're listening to. Uh, it gives you a better connection to it, and that's where we're going over the next few weeks and you'll see how again how this all develops out and where this ends up heading up. These are our as it BTS logs are the ad hoc notes. They're they're bits and pieces of things. Insta vlogs organize the ad hoc notes and 
forms a uh, notebook and you'll see that and then the InstaVlogs leads into uh, the doc zone and the doc zone is where you have your first rough drafts of different documentaries and different things that you know it's again the next level of organization in the research work uh, and of course uh, the variety of things you can do with this you can actually make music you can um, because now I have I do have a multi-track uh, studio here uh, I have a, the capability to do multi-track recording and um, let's see where this takes us. And I, I can say this, if we talk, talk about gaming, this is leveling up here. This is what I call leveling up. Uh, having this new setup, this brings me on to the next level of the gaming. It adds in music as part of my game. And where I go from here really depends on what I do with it. Uh, and as I say, gaming all around is about removing the restrictions from the game from, from being a simulated play in a simulated environment to bring your gaming into a real environment uh, and treating the real environment just the same way you would treat a game and there are leveling up there's all the different things that go along with the with the gaming so uh, anyways uh, I will see you in the next segment in a uh, few hours all right take it easy In gaming, uh, they often state that uh, when you reach a new level, you've leveled up. In other words, each level presents its own difficulty. Each level has its own uh, length to it. Uh, and but in, in a regular game, more or less the, uh, the the structure is kind of defined for you. In gaming RL, you're taking the same principles as you have in gaming, but applying them to specific goals to where you've reached certain goals uh, in a in a total adventure or uh, whatever you're gaming at. Uh, I'll give an example in history uh, or, or in uh, let's say music you want to put together uh, you want to do your music you, you need to put the first put together a studio once you get the studio together you, the next step is test it out. Once you've tested it out, then you start your practicing, you start working in your practices, and your music experience grows. This is leveling up. And I think it's how you determine your levels really determines how quickly you, you level up or don't level up. For myself, uh, I use a variety of things. If there's something specifically new that I'm able to get done that changes the way things go, then I say I've leveled up. But anyways, I am going to give you the uh, time and date stamp because this is a vlog. Although the time and date stamp uh, at, at this particular point is kind of useless. But uh, anyway, it's uh, 23 hours and 31 minutes into the day of Monday, February 10th, 2014. And we're doing the February 8th to 10th vlog all at once because over the weekend uh, there was too much going on. Some products that were supposed to be finished for the end of the week weren't finished. And uh, I had to push myself to finish the extra finish the extra work to get these projects done. I was able to get them done. They didn't fall apart on me. They did work. Uh, and so what it meant is that uh, I wasn't able to vlog over the weekend. But now I can vlog today and sort of give you sort of an overview of the weekend, which wasn't bad. It was it was a standard bit. It was. You know, going out to eat uh, at my parents' house for dinner on Saturday night, and then Sunday going to church, and then having lunch after church, uh, both with the people at church as the after the after uh, liturgy meal, and then um, a, a later lunch or dinner with my parents. Oh, uh, and what I did is I brought my cyborg, I brought cyborg Alpha Mu with me. That's the uh, mobile office. And I was able to get a fair bit of work done. So, and most of the work is has been and is and is uh, reorganizing. And that's as I said before, you have to organize, reorganize, and then organize again. And this is the same thing: you configure, reconfigure, and then reconfigure again. And what this ended, what ended up happening is, as I was uh, working on this stuff, we have, as we eat and we typically have discussions. And one of the favorite topics of the day is the uh, whole Illuminati thing the, the, and these different conspiracy theories. Uh, but 
Uh, I'm not specifically party to these conspiracy theories, but you do have to. I, I found you do have to take a look at them. That 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 is not always. Um, it's not always that whatever the, the entire the entire perspective of the conspiracy theories is not wrong. There are aspects to the uh, conspiracy theory that are wrong, and there are aspects that are correct. The government has lied to us many, numerous times. This has been proven. If you go into a, a little bit of history, you'll see this. If you study history, if you don't, if you don't study history, if you don't do any form of studying at all, then you know, don't worry about it. You know, <laughs> because it doesn't matter anyways. Because you haven't taken the chance, t taken the option to know. It, and this is all sort of works out to opinion. But the thing, the, but, but but my argument with the, with the Illuminati and all these other groups is that. Anything that has a history and exists within history, if you have these two combinations together, then what ends up happening is that you can create what I call the boundaries or the edge of the puzzle. So the Illumin we want to go look at the Illuminati puzzle. That's the puzzle we're doing. What do we want to do? We want to, we want to look at uh, the Illuminati in history and the Illuminati history. because. You want to see where they play up, where they come into history, how they affect history, and where they may have been playing, you know, what type of things they may have been doing. And the thing is, is that we know uh, a, a large chunk of the strategy that they use in terms of the, sec the secrecy. Uh, if you go into political science, there's a book you learn, you learn about, it's known as Machiavelli is the Prince. Uh, and this book has been the, uh, sort of the, the, uh, Political Science 101 book is the, is the if you want to understand pol <coughs> politics and particularly geopolitics, you need to un you need to go sit down and read The Prince. It's the fundamental basis that everything works off of in terms of pol geopolitics. And this, once you understand this, you understand and and then apply that to history. You can then see where the Illuminati sit within history. So, in other words, you now have a position for the Illuminati in history, and understand that the Illuminati, which is Italian, uh, are the societies that brought in reading and writing, particularly the, the books uh, from the old world, that's from the from the antiquities world of Byz of the Byzantines and the the the, the uh, in the Middle East. Which, ironically, the Middle East, most of the texts in the Middle East uh, that were around, were around in Greek. Greek, at, at one point in time, uh, up until uh, basically uh, almost, uh, almost uh, I would say, uh, 1400 AD, up to 1400 AD, uh, Greek was the common language of the developed world, of the world, uh, the, the developed world at the time. And don't, uh, you, need, <clears throat> you need to understand. Europe was in the Dark Ages. The antiquities world, the world of antiquities, uh, that's Egypt, the Middle East, uh, and Greece, Turkey, uh, they weren't in the Dark Ages. They had writing, they had mathematics, they had science. This stuff transferred from there through Greece and through Spain uh, into Europe. And it's the Illuminati that first started receiving these books, started getting these books, as the Greeks started coming over across the Aegean Sea into Pisa, into Genoa, uh, into Genovese, uh, the, the Genoa area, uh, into the Sicily. These were the Greeks and the Greek influences as they came in, and this started forming the Illuminati. As the libraries were built, the, the Illuminati built these libraries. There were some that they kept private to themselves, and some that they, they were allowed to become public. It's the private libraries, the secrecies, that a lot of people are interested in. And we can actually determine what's in them. And I'll talk about that in the next segment. Well, we're back again. And as I said, the Illuminati built, were built on these secret libraries. Now, how do you know what's in these libraries? Well, this is where you, again, you have to combine history with science. If you understand history and science, 
then you can more or less figure out what's in these, what was in these libraries. In other words, in terms of the extent of what's in the libraries, you can't give you, you can't go and get an exact detail of what's in the library, but you, you can sort of start building that, building the, building the boundaries and building the edges. So what you're doing here, and this is what we are doing here, using the visible, what, using what we know to build the boundaries, the edges of the puzzle. So that as we build the edges of the puzzle, we can, yeah, we've got a good edge here. Now let's start trying to fill in some of the pieces that might be missing that, that we don't necessarily understand in the center. And as you do this and you work within the science, you see, okay, well, physics and physics. What did they understand about physics? What did they understand about mechanics? Uh, what tools did they have at their disposal? And as you start going into this, you start, and, and, and there are different ways of doing this, uh, doing this because you can look at the, the works by Da Vinci, you can do look at the works of Michelangelo, and you can compare them. If you look at the works of Da Vinci and, uh, and, and Michelangelo, you can go back and compare them to the works of Archimedes. You can work, go back and compare them to, to the works of the of, of Pythagoras and the Pythagoreans, because there's a whole group of the Pythagoreans. Uh, in other words, you can go in. Uh, map out where the different Greek influences, the different the um, the academic influences, the illuminated influences came into these various different societies in various different ways. And the thing is these influences not only came in through through uh, uh, art and science, but they came in through music. Uh, and which, is, which is actually an art, but I'm talking about visual arts in terms of painting and uh, constructing things. You know, your architecture as opposed to music as an art. Music itself was an art, and you, there was a science behind it. And you have in the uh, European Renaissance, uh, and this is the first Renaissance, there are several Euro European Renaissances. And, but the European Renaissance, and I'm talking about the first ones, were primarily isolated to Italy and then to Spain. And Spain is down here, Italy is over here, here's Greece. In terms of the, this is the Mediterranean here. Here's Greece and, and here's Italy. That's how it, it comes in through uh, Greek, through Greece uh, into Italy. And then in Spain, it comes across the Mediterranean uh, from North Africa. So North a Spain is influenced by North Africa, and uh, Italy is influenced by Greece. And this is how the Enlightenment comes in. And is studying these histories, you can go back and figure out uh, what ended up in the Illuminati li libraries, in these secret libraries, by understanding these physics and it, what we know today, and figuring out how this history evolved. You can sort of figure out what was in these libraries that was so secret, so, you know, and why they were there. Why were these libraries kept secret? And the thing is, is that this is one of the things you can go back into this, this whole list, go and look into this whole example about figuring out what's what, you go back and take a look at Copernicus. Well, the first question you ask about Copernicus after you understand that he, what they say, what the claim is, that he is the one who discovered the uh, the Earth, the Earth w w went around the sun rather than being uh, a geocentric environment. In other words, our solar system wasn't, geo or the universe wasn't geocentric. In other words, everything didn't revolve around the Earth, but rather we were in orbit around the sun and they are they give this to this credit to uh copernicus and most people go okay yeah fine what happens is you have to go into the history of copernicus and know who he is you have to go into his personal history what you find out is you find out he's a monk and more than only is he a monk he's a jesuit and what happens is is that as copernicus is a monk now you know that all these books, these book, the, the these uh, these uh, the enlightened books came in through the church. What the, the the papacy in Europe controlled what people could and could not read, and the Jesuits were set up as the schools, as the universities to figure out what was allowed to be read and what by the by the general public and what was not allowed to be read. And so the church really controlled all this stuff. And so the hidden libraries were actually initially were were were, were collected and organized by the Jesuits, whose task it was was to determine the absolute truth, the God-given truth, in European society. Understanding this and understanding that that Copernicus was now a monk within the system, 
and understanding if you go back into the history, then you go start reading some of the, the history of uh, the early Roman Catholic Church and what they were doing, including the number of forgeries that were around. Monks who took Greek books, translated them, and rather than rather than putting the name of the original author there, put their own name on the book. In other words, they plagiarized. They took somebody else's work in Greek, they translated it into Latin, and then they put their name on it. And the question is, because Copernicus was a monk, did Copernicus actually write the theories and the theorems of the solar system? Or did he translate it and put his name? In other words, is the Copernicus theory of the... Uh, of the solar system a forgery or is it his work and this now brings you into the entire Illuminati mystery this the answer is no longer as simple as it was before because you have complications coming in you have different understandings coming in because you're now seeing more things that were initially left out I mean you know if the Roman Catholic Church didn't have the history it had and has then you want to say, oh yeah, there's no problem. The monk was honest. You know, he did his own work. But because of the history of the Roman Catholic Church, that can't be said. The Roman Catholic Church has been very destructive, historically. Uh, all you have to do is study the Crusades for this, you have, uh, and where they destroyed the Eastern Church. Uh, to understand this, look at the uh, wars, and to understand the Crusades and what the Crusades were really about, you have to go look at the conflicts between the Protestants and the Catholics. Look at what happened in Ireland. Understand that. Understand the Irish and Catholic, the Irish Catholic and the Irish Protestant conflict as the model for what happened in uh, the Middle East during the Crusades between the Eastern Christians and the Roman Catholics. Understand that as the as that model there, and it becomes clear to you why one thing led to another. And so you really do have to sort of uh, be careful with how you approach these histories, because if something if the information that that changes things is not in what you see, but in the things you don't see. And so we'll continue on with the the sort of Illuminati puzzle and show you how the scholarly fantasy evolves from there. Anyways, uh, our time is up and I will talk to you uh, in our next BTS Vlogs which will start in a couple hours. Alright, take it easy. Democratic Earth. Earth.